Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, and in this video we're going to look at making tile backgrounds in Allegro 5. Now in our previous video, we looked at taking full images as our background. So let's say my screen was you know, 600 by 800, but we had a, a 16, or 600 by 1600 uh, wide screen that we would use to scroll, just a much larger uh, bitmap image to represent our entire background. Uh, and we were able to do some parallax scrolling with that. And it was pretty neat. You know, you can get uh, you can get some really pretty backgrounds that way. You know, some very artsy backgrounds and stuff like that. However, in a lot of games, you don't necessarily... Well, two things. You don't necessarily know how big a map is going to be when you start. Um, or you might want program it or programmatically generated uh, content. Uh, so where your map might resize or, or things might move around. And so you might use something like a tile. And uh, tiling is something you see a lot in 2D game programming where the background is created of, of a bunch of smaller images all dynamically placed so that uh, changing the map or changing the background is very easy. If you consider my parallax demo from, uh, from the, the last video, if I wanted to modify my background in any way, I'd have to open up a, a, an image editor program and I'd have to, to manually change the background in a very hard fashion, meaning that it's, it, it's not it's not flexible, it's not dynamic, I, I change it and then set it and then that's the way it is. With tiles, we can change our backgrounds on the fly and we can, uh, we can modify a single tile and the, the background will be updated um, without changing all of the tiles and we, we have a lot, of, a lot of functionality. So I'm going to show you a real simple way of doing this uh, through programming and what I've done is I've created myself kind of like a sprite sheet, it's a tile sheet um, of two images, my two background textures and you know you can do a lot more than two you can do as many as you want but I wanted to keep it simple I'm using two uh, and in my tile I'm using or my background I'm using grass and stone and so I have this image here this is my tile sheet and I've got two bricks each are 128 pixels I just chose that at random 128 pixels and 128 pixels and this will be my grass and this will be my stone all right so that is my that is my my tile sheet so I'll move that back over here. All right, and so what I want to do is I want to be able to use, using just those two, those two um, uh, tiles, I want to be able to create a very large uh, functional background. And if I wanted to do this with, say, like, the, like my parallax uh, demo, just with a, with a normal PNG or bitmap, that image would be fairly large. Well, here, these tiles are relatively small, so it's not, uh, it's not all that difficult. To, to have very, very large backgrounds, taking a very small amounts of space. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's look at what I have here so far. This is my width and my height, my header files, my keyboard stuff. Uh, this, just, this is all just boilerplate stuff at this point. Updating my keys, uh, nothing in my update, nothing in my render, and then exiting the program. All right, so nothing really crazy there. But I am going to need to create myself a few variables to control everything going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple here. First, I'm going to do int x off, it's going to equal zero, and int y off, it's going to equal zero. That's my x offset and my y offset. I'll keep track of, of how my, my background is shifting the offset of my background. Uh, and then I'm going to have int map columns, and I'll show you why this is important here in a second. Uh, 10 and int map size. 100 and int tile size is 128. Okay, so when we did animations with bitmaps and we had a, a sprite sheet and you circle cycle through the sprite sheet, um, we had things like animation columns and total. And, um, I think it was animation frames. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head now. Um, was the total number of frames in in our animation cycle? This is very similar. This is how many columns are in our map and how many tiles total. So knowing these two numbers, I know that I'm gonna have 10 rows of 10. 10 times 10 is 100, 10 rows of 10, and that is, that's how many uh, uh, tiles I'm gonna have in 100. And then my tile size, I said before, is 128 pixels. That'll change if you use different tiles. Now here is, is where the actual map occurs. And I'm actually not gonna type this out in front of you guys. I'm gonna copy and paste because it's a lot of typing. So bam. All right, so let me look, show you what we're looking at here. We are looking at an array of integers, all right, 
It is a single dimension array. You can do this with a two dimensional array, and it's uh, theoretically easier, but then you have to mess around with, with two dimensional arrays. And I'm trying to keep things simple here, and this is honestly the way I would do it if I was programming it this way to begin with. Just single, uh, single uh, uh, dimension arrays uh, to, to keep things simple and to keep things efficient. But I have laid it out here as a, a square so we can kind of see how things will work. Now I only have two tiles, so I'm going to have either a zero or a one in each of these spots. Zero is going to be the grass, one is going to be the stone. So by looking at this, you can see what my map is going to look like. It's going to be grass, grass, stone, stone, grass, grass, stone, stone, grass, 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 stone, grass, grass, stone, stone, grass, grass, stone, grass. You can see, so by looking at this, I can kind of get an idea of what my background is going to look like. I mean, let's say I'm, I'm working with my code and I ever want to change my background. All I have to do is come to this map and change it. Just change 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. If I added a new, uh, a new tile, I can make it a 2 or a 3 or so on and so forth. And, and change my, my background that simply. No image editors or anything like that. Just quick little integer changes. I rerun it and then boom, it, it's, it's fine. All right, so this is going to be what makes our background work. All right, this, this map. All right, and there's a hundred tiles that's going to make this up. All right, now that I have that, I have to go ahead and load in my tiles. So I'm going to do an Allegro bitmap. I'm called BG Sheet equal to null. And since I've created that, I'm going to come all the way to the bottom, do AL, destroy, bitmap, pass in BG Sheet. Awesome. Uh, Okay, just make, wait for that error to go away. Then here, after I load my add-ons, I'm going to do bg sheet equals al load bitmap, and I'm going to call this. I named it background dot png, just like that. There we go. So that'll load my my png file there. And so realistically, I mean, really, we're, we're kind of almost done here. There's not a whole lot to it. This is literally the most important part is, is laying it out in array form. So I'm just going to do some updating stuff to make it more interactive. We see here that I'm updating my keyboard. So based on that, I'm going to update my position. So I'm going to say x off is going to minus equal keys sub right times 5. Um, the key sub right will either be true or false. True or false equates to 0 or 1. So this will either be 5 times 0 for nothing or 5 times 1 for 5. So I'll just make myself a little bit of a shortcut there so I don't have if statements. I'll paste that 4 times or 3 times. Change those to y. Change that to plus. Change that to plus. And change this from key sub right to key sub left. And then key sub down. And then key sub up. All right, just real quick there. So then, uh, basically, the, the the screen is going to move to the right because the x offset is going to move to the left whenever we hit the right key, and vice versa. So it's a little backwards from what we're used to saying. Where if I if I hit the right or if I want something to move left, I minus it on the x axis because left is towards uh, or, or or negative is towards the left. Um, in this case, we're messing with the offset, not the map itself. So by moving the offset left, we're moving the map right. Um, and so that's why it seems a little backwards there. But if you're curious, you can try it the other way and see what the effect is. All right. And so <clears throat> now we're just ready to draw it. And drawing is going to look very similar to our animation. We're basically going to figure out, you know, we're going <clears> to <throat> essentially draw these sequentially so that we draw all these tiles out on screen. So I'm going to say 4 int i equal to 0. i is less than map size. That's the one that was 100. i plus plus. All right. And so I'm going to say al draw bitmap region. And I'm going to pass in bg sheets. And now my starting x, okay, my starting x value, uh, which means if we look here, bring this back over here, uh, my starting x can, should either be 0 for this corner, or 128 for this corner. All right. So based on whether or not I pass the zero or one into that map array, we'll draw which tile we want to draw. So uh, I'm just going to say that I'm going to my starting line is going to be tile size. That's 128. 
times map sub i, the current, uh, the current position on this map. All right. So if it's a zero, we're going to draw grass. If it's a one, we're going to end up drawing stuff. Right. And so my y is going to be zero. Now, if my tile sheet had y directions, I I do like map sub i times tile height or or, or something like that. Um, you know, to to draw. Uh, the, both the X position and the Y position of tiles that are on multi rows, but my tile sheet is only on a single row, so I'm just going to put a zero in there. And then finally, my width is going to be tile size, my height is going to be tile size because they're both the same in this instance. Now, my X, where it's going on the screen, is going to be uh, basically it's going to be a, a linear uh, linear algebra function. If you remember Y equals MX times or MX plus B, right? Uh, that's effectively what we're doing here. Uh, where our offset is going to be uh, x offset, that's what it's going to be plus, and then we're going to say tile size uh, times, oops, I have issues typing here, i modulus map columns. Now this should look familiar if you remember int fx for drawing our animation columns. Is going to equal current or uh, is going to equal the height uh, times current frame modulus animation frames or animation columns or whatever. Um, that's the exact same formula. Only now we're also offsetting it there. Uh, and then we're going to do the same for the y. We're going to say y off plus tile size times. This time it's just going to be i divided by map columns. And then finally zero for our flags. All right. And that's it. And that'll end up sequentially going boom, 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 next line, boom, 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 next line, boom, 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 drawing all of our tiles in a row. So I'm going to run it. And here we have my background. It's not super pretty, but you know, there it is. Uh, it's my background. And as I move, you can see my background scrolls. Now, one thing you'll see here, I didn't add any bounds checking. So obviously, we can go outside of the bounds of this image. In a real game, I'd bounds check so you couldn't go, you wouldn't see that black, you know. Um, but yeah, so I have a scrolling background. My background is made up entirely of tiles. As you can see, obviously, mine are just textures I pulled off the internet, so they don't blend together very well. But if you get good textures, you know, that are meant to be tiled, where these lines are seamless, um, then the user will, you know, possibly never know there's a tiled background. Um, and everything will look much, much better. But I just like to grab quickly, you know, two images off the internet, slap them in there, resize them, and create my background for that. So there you go. So that is uh, tile-based backgrounds. That's everything you really need to know there. Um, one of the, the shortcomings we're going to look at in the next video is, is you know, is also the greatest strength of tile-based uh, background. It's this, this array here, this map. Uh, effectively is what makes this possible, but at the same time, it's fairly cumbersome. Uh, the reason I didn't type it out is because there's a hundred numbers in there, and I had to type those all out. Um, and so this is for a 10 by 10 map. Uh, in my next video, I want to use a 200 by 200 map. And obviously, that's not <laughs> very, very simple, because uh, I have to do qu quite a few numbers in there, you know? That, uh, that would take a very long time to type out all those zeros and ones to have a 200 by 200 map. So there's a, a little bit of a shortcoming there. We're going to look at uh, using a piece of software in a library to help facilitate, uh, facilitate making bigger backgrounds. But I wanted to do this video so that you knew why the next video worked, why that you know, was successful. You can see the underlying technology. Because the technology doesn't really change, the concept doesn't really change, they're just helper functions to make that a little bit simpler for us. Uh, so stay tuned, that will be in our next video.